Am I the a-hole for calling the police on my niece who stole my car? I, 46, female, live on a farm with my husband and two kids. My brother, Dwayne, 38, has a daughter. We'll call her Emma, 15. My brother and his wife have always been very quick to compliment me on the behavior of my children. Angela, my sister-in-law, confides in me about Emma's troubles. Emma is very reckless, shoplifts, drinks, has an old boyfriend, and gets into fights at school. She's also constantly suspended in and out of school. Over the summer, Emma had a run-in with the law, and they were told that if she didn't straighten up her act that she would end up in prison. They were suggested and tried therapy, but Emma never would participate. Dwayne asked me if I would take Emma and teach her some responsibility, but the arrangement was that I would take Emma for the final month of summer, enroll her in school here and keep her for the first semester. If all went well, Emma was welcome to stay with us. Otherwise, other options would be explored, those of which are unknown to me. Emma did not do well all through July. Her boyfriend drove over to visit her to my dismay. I tried to make him leave, but it caused some backlash. So I figured I would set the visitation then wean her time from him more and more. Then I caught her smoking one of those electronic cigarettes, twice. She would never do any of the work ask. Would talk back, steal food, break things, and would be rude to my children. All of that could be dealt with. I knew that once school came around, she needed to be more disciplined. So one morning, we got into an argument because I told her I was chaining up the fridge and that she better act right or else she will be forced to scavenge for her food around a farm and cook it herself. If she doesn't want to contribute, she gets nothing the household has worked for. She was livid, throwing stuff, stomping her feet and making rude gestures. My son and I left to go to tend to the animals' morning duties and told her that she better catch up to get some chicken tonight or start preparing to pick some vegetables for herself. After an hour of work, I sent my son back home to get me a change of pants due to a fall. He came back asking me if Dad had taken my car. We quickly realized Emma had stolen my car. Not only that, but she did not have a license, only a permit. I did what any reasonable person would do in this situation and called the police. They found her two hours later and arrested her, saying she was to be charged with a misdemeanor for driving without a license and I believe joyriding. My brother and his wife are furious with me. They told me she steals our cars all the time, it always brings them back, which that would have been good information for me to know beforehand. My family siding with them that calling the police when knowing she would be arrested was an a-hole move. Just to tack this on so I don't have to reiterate this to everyone who comments about the fridge bit. That was more or less an empty threat. If it came to it though, I can't say I would have totally ruled that out as crossing the line. Also, about stealing food, part of what I do is I bake and sell what I make at a farmer's market nearby. She would take cakes, pies, and other pastries I would make and eat them herself. I would make some little versions for the kids, but she would take the whole portion meant for sale and eat it herself and throw out the extra. She would throw away three-fourths of a cake. Please note we live on a vegetable farm. She has access to vegetables and fruits. When I say scavenge, I mean go outside and pick something to eat and cook. I'm not denying her food. Now for the top comments. Not day haul at all. She steals our cars all the time, it always brings them back. Well, now we know where she learned all this from. If they expected you, her aunt, to just brush off her stealing your car, imagine what they let her get away with. We sent her to live with you because what we're doing isn't working. But how dare you do anything differently from what we were doing? LMAO, exactly. They just wanted to be rid of her. Stupid parents. Not day home. She stole your car. She assaulted your son. I don't know how I feel about chaining up the fridge. That seems borderline abusive, but as for everything else, I'm on your side. Lock her up. That was more or less an empty threat. If it came to it though, I can't say I would have totally ruled that out as crossing the line. Send her back. She doesn't respect your rules or your authority, and you don't realize it now, but having there is definitely impacting your children negatively. Also, her parents and your family sounds ungrateful. Send her back. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not giving up my bed for my boyfriend's daughter? My boyfriend has three kids. 12 female, 7 female, 5 female. A wildfire broke out by their house and the neighborhood had to evacuate, so I told my boyfriend to bring his kids to my apartment. I've known his kids for months and they're all great kids, but they're a bit spoiled. My boyfriend's oldest daughter has health issues and they were at the hospital getting her treatments when the fire broke out. The younger two were at home with their nanny when the fire broke out, 
So the nanny took the kids straight to my place and my boyfriend joined us an hour or so later. My boyfriend came in carrying his oldest because she was asleep and he didn't want to wake her up. He asked where he could put her down. So I showed him to the room that I had planned on all of the kids and the nanny sharing. Nanny's a live-in nanny, and I guess she didn't have anywhere else to go. Room has two bunk beds, so everyone has their own bed. But he said he didn't want her to be in the same room as her siblings because she was going to need a lot of rest, and he doesn't want them to bother her. I asked where I was supposed to put her, and he suggested my room. I asked if it meant only for a few hours, and he said no, the whole night. I asked where we were supposed to sleep, and he said we can sleep on a pull-out couch. I said I wasn't giving up my room so his 12-year-old can have her own room, and he left with the kids at Nanny. Now he's saying he needs to rethink this relationship because I wouldn't sleep on my couch for one night to let his daughter rest without her siblings waking her up and bothering her. No a-holes here. Parenting is a tough topic to broach. Personally, I think a lot of parents cuddle their children beyond belief. That said, it's their choice. This sounds like it may just be a compatibility issue. Personally, I'd side with you. But I know a lot of parents that would be in this camp of doing anything for the children for even the smallest of things. I'm also leaning towards no a-holes here, but want to know what health issue the child has and what treatment she had received. That could explain the cuddling and could mean there was a legitimate need to have her rest undisturbed. She has some chronic illnesses and has to go to the hospital for treatments every couple weeks. Could be a lot of things, but that sounds like maybe IVIG or a biological. Both will wipe you right the heck out and leave you knocked on your butt for the rest of the day and the whole next day. And both younger kids are old enough to be told to keep quiet and leave the room if they wake up so they don't disturb their sister. So you graciously opened your home to five extra people at a moment's notice, providing a bed to everyone, but if you don't give up yours, it wasn't enough? I realized the oldest was sick, but the other children did not have to be in the bedroom if they were not sleeping, and there was a nanny there to ensure they were kept away from the older child. To me, it looks like a glimpse into your future where you will be expected to sacrifice anything you feel his children should be entitled to, regardless whether it is your private property or not. Just my honest opinion, not the home. This is exactly what I thought. She gives them a place, that's not good enough. Like, dude, your kids are old enough to leave the room and stay out when they wake. What is the nanny for, if she is not helping keep them away? You can't expect someone that was nice enough to give them a place to go to to give up their own bed and comfort to please you, or cater to your child. Also, people keep saying it's only one night, but is it? They got evacuated and no guarantees it'll be safe tomorrow, or for the next week, or longer. The kid is still going to be chronically ill tomorrow, and the next day and the day after that. Will boyfriend decide, well, actually, she's more comfortable in your bed. We can stay in the futon. She's housing them in a time of need. They should be grateful. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to bring my nanny family's baby back home when they told me to? I, 27 female, have been a nanny for the same family for about six months now. It's a one-year-old baby girl and she's the sweetest baby ever. I thought the family was really nice and that we had a good working relationship. Until yesterday. I always take the baby on walks, either around the neighborhood or we would walk down to the school shopping center where they have a little fountain and a bubble tea shop we like to hang out at. There's toys and games and she always has fun there. We walked down to the bubble tea shop yesterday and we're playing as usual. We're usually out for like an hour when it started raining. It drizzled a bit so we went inside a shop to wait it out before walking back and then it started pouring, like storming. It was awful and it rained for so long. I texted the mom saying, hey, it's raining really bad. So we're just going to wait it out, but we're at the bubble tea shop. She told me it was almost the baby's nap time and that I needed to head home now like usual. I asked her if she had looked out the window to see how bad it was raining. And she said, yes, the baby has a cover for their stroller. She will be fine. Please head back. I told her baby has a cover, but I don't have an umbrella or jacket and I'll get soaked and will have to finish out my shift soaking wet. I asked if she or her husband could just come pick us up, and she said it's my job to do what she says. I told her I was not walking back in the rain. After an hour, yes, it kept raining, her husband came and picked us up, apologizing, saying he was sleeping and didn't know we were out here in the rain. When we got back, mom screamed at me, saying how dare I not bring her baby home when she told me to, and accused me of kidnapping. Dad said she was being dramatic, but didn't really do much. She threatened to fire me and told me not to come in today and that we will discuss everything Monday. 
Was I wrong for not coming back? It was pouring. I didn't want to have to sit in a soaked clothes for hours. My hair would get ruined. I didn't want to get sick. Like there are so many reasons I didn't want to be in the pouring rain. Plus, it didn't feel that safe. I guess if I'm wrong, I'll apologize Monday, but my boyfriend said she's being unreasonable and can't fire me for that. I feel like I should quit. I don't know. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Boyfriend says she can't fire me for that because of my contract. She has to give me notice six weeks if she doesn't want me to work for her anymore or else she has to pay me for the time I'm missing. I also did check the weather, but it said it was raining way later that night. The sun was shining when we left. Mom also asks me to take her on these walks daily. I enjoy them, but a lot of comments keep talking about these walks as if they're for me. And yes, it was a thunderstorm. Now for the top comments. Not today, home. I bet she'd have complained if you or the baby got sick from being out in the cold slash rain. You made a smart decision. That kind of rain sounds like a thunderstorm. Aren't most baby buggies aluminum? Yes, let me roll this lightning rod home. Or maybe my moms don't take a bath or use the phone during a thunderstorm paranoia rubbed off on me. Not today, home, but I wouldn't want to keep working for her after that. Threatening slash accusing you of kidnapping could have serious consequences. It's scary how easily she went there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm going to talk to the agency because there's a mistreatment clause in my contract. When you talk to the agency, use the terms shelter in place due to inclement weather for the safety of you and the child. Not day home. Or maybe everyone sucks here. Her reaction was over the line and I would not continue to work for someone who screamed at me and accused me of a crime. I agree that you should contact the agency and quit. But was it like obviously supposed to rain that day? Are they really strict on nap time? Is baby difficult if she gets off schedule? If it rained for an hour plus, seems like that would have been something you'd have seen on a radar. If your poor planning is going to ruin the rest of their day with baby being off schedule, I can see how that would be frustrating for them. And sounds like the dad was able to pick you up. But expecting them to stop work and drive again because of poor planning would be even more frustrating. Dad was sleeping, not working, lol. And she stops working to go to hair appointments and to the gym. So I didn't think picking us up would be bad. I had no idea it was going to rain. Like it started as sun showers, then got crazy. It wasn't supposed to rain until later that night. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for wanting to serve my ex papers for full custody and child support for my daughter now that he has a new baby? I, 31 female, have a wonderful 7-year-old daughter I would go to the moon and back for and have been supporting her as a single parent. My ex, 31 male, hasn't really been in her life since we split when she was two and a half. He hasn't paid child support for the last four years and has sporadically visited her at his parents' home when she visits. He says he will visit her while hyping her up and then not show up only to give BS excuses on why he never showed up, leaving her devastated and upset that he didn't spend time with her. He has blamed me for everything under the sun which I can prove to not be true. For example, he blames me for not calling him so he can video chat with her on my days off, when he doesn't even attempt to try in the first place on his days off. He even stated he couldn't pay child support because he was rebuilding his car. My ex had seen multiple girls in the past four years, but has been seeing his current girlfriend for about a year at this point and she has a three-year-old daughter. He shunted our daughter to be his girlfriend's daughter's father. Doing father-slash-daughter activities like going to the pumpkin patch, holidays, and spending time with a three-year-old. He forgot his own daughter's birthday for two years in a row and possibly for a third time this year. Now, his family and I heard a rumor that the girlfriend was pregnant three to four months ago. His parents wanted to be in the baby's life. And I was ecstatic that my daughter would have a half-sibling since I don't want more kids. He vehemently denied she was pregnant. And we left the subject alone. Well, about 10 minutes before I started my shift, I was told and shown that my ex's girlfriend had their baby girl that morning. I was livid. He had lied to all of us that the baby was coming and severed whatever trust with him we had left. I started looking at family attorneys in my city because I know this will get messy. He wants parental rights without having to lift a finger or pay child support, while I want full custody since our daughter lives with me full time. Before people ask, no, he's not in our daughter's life unless he wants others to see his being a good dad. The last time he visited her, she didn't recognize him at all. Yes, I have filed for child support several times in the past, only for them to die in courts because he didn't want to sign the paperwork. I'm at my wit's end with him. 
I vented to a couple of close friends and close co-workers about this and the majority are saying I'm the a-hole because I should be excited for the new baby and that with a new baby, he won't have the funds for child support. Am I the a-hole if I go through with getting a family attorney and serving him papers while he's caring for a newborn? Not the a-hole. I'm surprised you haven't already served him papers. Exactly. Also, the fact that he has a new child doesn't take away from the fact he's manipulating his eldest by being sporadic. It is only turning up occasionally to confuse her little soul and for a picture-perfect dad image. He's being a monster to her and honestly, you're the a-holopi just for leaving him the power to crush your little girl. He's not a father, let alone a dad. At most, he's a sperm donor that oversteps boundaries. Get your daughter out of that, OP. Not stay home. But you should have done this from the very beginning. You need to retain an attorney now, and you need to remove yourself emotionally from him. His girlfriends, kids, whatever are none of your business. Your only focus needs to be on what's right for your daughter or you're trapping yourself emotionally in a relationship with him when it literally doesn't exist. I'm not emotionally invested in him, especially with him cheating on me while I was pregnant and when she was six months old. He didn't come clean about 